guys, welcome to the HVAC Diaries. The HVAC Diaries is brought to you by New Calgon. Actually, this box right behind me is a case of New Calgon Dragon Towels for a giveaway that I'm doing on Instagram. And you guys are the first to know about it because I haven't even announced it on Instagram yet. So I'll let you know more about that when I have more details. How are you guys this week? Did you have a good week? I have adventures for you. That's why we're here. That's why I do these vlogs. So let us go. This week we did another one of those water source heat pump unit replacements. What did I say last week? I'm gonna stop vlogging about them. And here we are again. Look how much wide open space we have to work around this unit. All the space. <laughs> this week's one was a two and a half ton unit. Last week's one was just a one ton unit. So it was really easy for Trevor and I to get that done by ourselves. But usually when we have a two, two and a half or three ton system, we'll get dad to come in as well. Well, because we think we need three people to lift the unit from the ground onto the lift platform so we can like lift it and lower it. Uh, those units are pretty heavy. So it's usually three people to do that. However, this time Trevor said, dad, you're here, but maybe if you can just stand back and be there ready to support if Jess needs it. But let's see if we can do it, just the two of us, if we can lift the unit. And you guys, we did it. We did it. I'm so pleased. Uh, we figured out a way that we could do it, just the two of us. And the trick is, because the unit is so big and heavy, and because the lift platform is basically shoulder height for me, what I have trouble with is lifting the unit up from the ground in this kind of way. Yeah, this is awesome. <laughs> okay, so I have my hands underneath the unit in this kind of way. But then to get it up to where my shoulder is, I have to get into this kind of configuration. So I usually start on my knees, or not on my knees, but down low because I have to lift with my legs. I lift with my legs, not with my back. So you lift with your legs in this kind of way. And then you got to get the unit from here to here. <laughs> anyway, I figured out a way to do it. And I am very pleased now that Trevor and I can do all of the water source heat pump unit replacements on our own, if we want to. We did a quick HVAC maintenance inspection at a place that tests and calibrates testing instruments. Look at all their bits boxes. There's so many little tiny bits in there. Bitses. So like your multimeter or like CO analyzers and stuff like that, they test them and then they recalibrate them there. It's very cool. They've got two rooftop units, one serving their like workspace and the other one serving their administrative offices upstairs. It's got a couple of units on this roof. Nice new carrier that we installed, I don't know, a few years ago now, maybe three years. And then this old, I'm not sure if that guy even works. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Then this old uh, Yorkie. York, York, York. These are uh, not Merv plates. Those are smaller plates. All done. 
All right, Trevor's at the bottom. He's gonna catch these filters. You ready? Yes? Okay, yeah. one, two, three. Fire in the hole. Oh, shit. That didn't work out. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> Nothing really to report there, except the ladies that are working in the office upstairs, they were like, you know, it just sometimes doesn't get cool anymore. So they do have an old R22 York unit on the roof, but everything was working pretty good. So then we went downstairs and in their office space, we went into the ceiling just to check everything. And wouldn't you know, a whole flexible duct has come off completely. It's broken. Yeah, because I don't think, huh. I, I mean, I can ask Mark. So they're just spewing cool air into their ceiling space, just money flying out there. And the ladies there were being so silly while we were there. It was so funny. They were... They were practicing their Scottish accents. They're not Scottish, <laughs> they're Canadian. <laughs> but they're like practicing their Scottish accents and it was so funny. We checked out a little display cooler at a coffee shop. It was completely frozen over. It's one of those DX coils, so it doesn't have a fan to like force the air down. It just, by gravity, I guess, it cools the coil and by gravity takes the cool air down. Anyway, so that was completely plugged up with ice. All that ice, 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 ice. And so we just made an adjustment to the thermostat or the controller to increase the intervals and length of the defrosts because right now or before she only had it going into a defrost twice a day for 20 minutes. And so that just wasn't enough to thaw that ice that, that builds up over the day. So it just kept building and building and building and building until suddenly it's like frozen solid and it doesn't cool anymore. So uh, we just adjusted those defrost intervals and that should take care of that. We had two of the exact same service calls in one day. One of them was the pub that we worked at last week where we repaired the their beer glass cooler, chiller, chiller, cooler. Anyway, he called us back and he was like, hey, now I've got some other stuff for you to look at in my kitchen instead of my bar. So we took a look at his little prep cooler. We took a look at another undercounter cooler. Oh. And then he's got this undercounter freezer that he says hasn't worked for like years. It's just like basic storage. But he's like, while you're here, you might as well check it out. So how long ago has this not not been working? That one was almost a year. Oh, so it's been a long time. Yeah. Oh, okay. So the compressor on it wasn't starting just wasn't starting at all. So we replaced the starting electrical components, the star cap, the relay, and the overload. But unfortunately, when we plugged it back in, it was dead. It was locked rotor. So he's gonna have to replace that compressor or that freezer. Which is black. That's gonna go to the top. Yeah. Come on, baby, get in there. Okay, awesome. All right, let's see. Just make sure they both. All right, we are all wired up here. We've got our start guy here. Everything's wired as it should be. Now, fingers crossed to see if she starts. Okay, ready? Yeah. All right, so I just removed that hard start starting component thing because that's obviously not gonna work here. 
grab the model in serial or just the model, I guess. So we're gonna quote on replacing it. And then the second one we looked at was on a catering truck. So we've done a lot of work for this one guy on his various trucks. This time he's purchased a second hand vehicle, like a support truck. And on it came a true uh, fridge. It was one of those tall reach in fridges. So one of our catering truck clients has this support vehicle, this green guy. He's got a new true fridge. Well, he bought it secondhand and he wants us to do a little once over on it. Can I borrow your Robbie? My Robbie? Yes. So we took a look at it and again, the same situation, the compressor just wasn't starting. So we replaced the starting components, those, those same three components. Is that good enough? Okay, well we have the exact same problem as we had on the previous fridge. So I'm gonna use the exact same starting kit that I just pulled out of that other one. This is what I'm working with right here. I'll click. Um, we'll get that shit out of there in a second. Let's get these guys on here. So, common is beautiful. All right. So now we get that upright, and then we can get rid of that thing. And this time when we plugged it in, ha, ah, music to our ears, it fired up right away and worked like a dream. Good. Everyone's fingers and toes are crossed? Yeah, yeah, good. You think it could have just been a solenoid, maybe? Great success! Hmm. Well, this this cooler hasn't been working for like a few Oh, did some people have an opinion about those three-in-one hard start kits from Subco. It just replaces those three um, starting components. But some people say, A, that it's um, a lazy fix, that you should really uh, order the starting components for that compressor and replace the components themselves and not just throw in a hard start. And somebody else said it's, it's a lazy repair. And I beg to differ because we have those hard start kits in our truck. We've got a number of them in a, in a number of sizes and they literally cost us less than $20. I think they cost $18.95 or something like that. $18.35. I'm not sure. So we've got this um, solution that we carry with us on our trucks. We can get them up and going like immediately. Oh, your compressor's not starting. Oh, let's throw in a hard start kit. Oh, it's working now. Would, would you know like I don't have to go back to the office and order parts and wait for them to come to me and then go back the next time it all just happens immediately and as far as it being like a temporary solution uh, the condition that these units are in these coolers prep coolers reaching coolers and stuff the condition that they're in uh, the people are not going to pay for us to come back later on to replace something that is already working and Anyway, I disagree. I think they're a great alternative. They're a great solution to an immediate problem. We work for this sort of like assisted living place. They have people with disabilities and addictions and stuff like that. And they just, they offer a place to live and a place to come and do activities. Like they've got a computer room and a games room and a music room and stuff like that. And, and a bunch of offices and like a commercial kitchen basically. They've got a little server room downstairs where we installed a ductless split system about three years ago. Um, so they were having trouble with that server room unit. It was just not getting cool anymore. We were actually pretty chuffed with ourselves because we installed that system in one single run. There were no joins along our refrigerant pipes. So one single line set um, to the indoor unit to the outdoor unit. So the only place for a potential leak would be on the flare fittings on the indoor and the outdoor units. But we got nothing there at all. No leaks came up there. So we started disassembling the condensing unit. And finally, we found something. We found a leak, some evidence of a leak. Our leak detector went crazy. Cool. 
So because those units are so compact, you basically have to disassemble the whole thing and take it apart. Um, but because we were looking for a refrigerant leak, we didn't want to do that terribly because we want to make it run so that we can have high enough pressures to find this leak. So eventually uh, we ended up calling tech support because we were like, first of all, we want to find out if this unit is under warranty. But second of all, there's a leak either in the reversing valve or in the compressor or in some kind of component, maybe in the EEV, the expansion valve. Not quite sure. So he's on the phone with tech support and tech support's like, do me a favor, check the relief valve. Those are notorious for leaking. And you guys. It's leaking. Look at it. It's beautiful. Tech support works. Wow. With the help of new Calgon's blue bubble soap solution. Beautiful bubbles. Beautiful. So luckily our local supplier had one of those little fusible plugs in stock. They replaced it for us under warranty. They didn't, we don't have to pay anything for it. And luckily that was the source of our leak. It was World Refrigeration Day on June 26, as it is every year. And to celebrate, I was invited to speak on a discussion panel um, for the refrigeration mentor, Trevor Matthews. We were speaking about diversity and equality in commercial refrigeration. And uh, it was really cool to be on that panel. On World Refrigeration Day on June 26, I was invited to speak. I've on never actually seen one of these fusible plugs before. It was kind of cool to see that it's just a piece of metal, like a almost like a drip of metal that goes right Trevor through it. Matthews. This one has and popped, on so this one really obviously is the source of the leak because in the it's let air through it. Pretty honored to be on this list of speakers. So just finished up that panel discussion with Trevor Matthews for World Refrigeration Day. What a great conversation. Um, somebody said something so interesting to me. They, it just resonated with me. <clears throat> she said, we should stop calling it a male-dominated industry and start calling it a pre uh, <laughs> predominantly male industry. Words matter. It's not a male-dominated industry. It's a predominantly male industry. I like that. I was also interviewed a few weeks ago for a careers in the skilled trades campaign that was posted or I guess published in the National Post. And that came out today. I did an interview with Media Planet for this National Post article. It was actually for their careers in the skilled trades campaign, which is pretty cool. Got some photos, a really long article. Well, it's not an article. It was a, it's a QA and a um, interview. But yeah, pretty sweet. Well, guys, that's all the HVAC adventures I have for you this week. I don't have a big story or two like I have recently. So hopefully you enjoyed those little stories. And um, yeah, I look forward to bringing more HVAC adventures next week. Still kind of waiting for things to happen with that pub and liquor store that we need to replace one unit at. The city that that's happening in is kind of taking their time, but hopefully that'll come through soon, soon, and I can vlog all about it. So until then, take it easy, and I'll see you next time. Bye! Behind me is a... No more cars. Go away. Okay. Round in this kind of way. Yeah, this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so this time we we went really hard. So this time we uh, do I even want to We checked out a little display. Oh, what we had two service calls. 
one of them worked the compressor on it dude how loud do you have to be <laughs> cool <laughs> came out today so hey, for one of their skill hey, we're gonna have to come back and do a refrigeration so uh, bleh. what does all that mean oh shit Bra, 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 bae. Check it. Beautiful. Now you do it on me.